Welcome in the second section of our course. In this section we will be looking at the topic of immutability of state in reactive processing. So, firstly we will be looking at the concurrency with mutable state. In the second video we will see how to alleviate those problems. We will be improving concurrency models with immutable state. Third video will be about creating state monad. So, we will try to create a container for reactive state and actually we will be leveraging existing labeler to do that. Fourth video will be about sharing state between reactive consumers and producers. So we'll leverage what we will create in third video and test it accordingly. Fifth video will be about tips and tricks how to make our immutable state to occupy less space. We'll see one very good trick to make it happen. So this is a first video in which we'll be looking at the concurrency with mutable state. We'll be analyzing multi-threaded program, then we'll be adding state that is shared between multiple threads, and finally we'll be synchronizing state. So we'll see that this is a drawback and give us a lot of contention and lower the performance of the end program. So this will be a very simple test, but a lot is going on here, so we will need to understand line after line. So we will have two threads that tries to access mutable map. So first approach will be very simple. So we will create a hash map and we will just assign it to mutable map. Then we will put some values into that map. So key and value is put string and string. And then we are creating two threads. Thread number one and thread number two. Both threads can be started like in the future, but we don't need to start it even to understand that but let's start it in the next line. So starting. We can wait for the finish for both threads, of course. And such program at the first glance can look and work as expected. But there is huge problem here because we are using here mutable state that is shared by two threads. Those threads could be executed in different CPU cores, physical cores, and that map can land in a different memory cache line in a CPU. Let's say this is core 1, it will have own copy of this mutable map in its own cache. So in the L1 cache it can have copy of this mutable one and that thread can be executed in the second core, in the C2. So here it will have own copy on mutable map. And we can see that problem starts to appear because when we will be adding some value from the first core it will be only propagated to its own cache and from the second core to the second cache. So there will be problem because the thread 1 will not see modifications done by thread 2. So this is a big problem when we want to share state between threads. So one problem to alleviate that is to introduce synchronizing state. So we can wrap our hash map in synchronized map, so it means that every access to this specific map will be synchronized. Let's look at how this happens. So we are creating synchronized map wrapper and we can see that all methods that are needed here, like for example, let's see how put is working. We can see that inside of it, we are synchronizing on internal mutex that is an object. So it means that every put, also every get as you can see here, size is empty every method is synchronized so at most one thread can access this specific map but things get a little bit more interesting if for example we want to only have read operation from the specific map so let's say that both threads are reading only not writing and reading should be thread safe if we have immutable data structure but mutable map could be modified anywhere but any thread so because of that we need to synchronize even though we are only accessing value we cannot be sure that other thread like for example t3 will modify that map and our state will go out of sync so that's why we can alleviate that problem introducing immutable state 